Hi, welcome to this briefing for assessment task one on module one. Okay, so what will this presentation cover today? I'm going to remind you about what um, task one is, so what that task one assessment is, which I went through with you in the introduction um, right at the beginning of the module. I'm going to talk to you about how to prepare for task one. So both in terms of your learning um, and the learning that we've done on the module, but also in terms of a formative or practice assessment that you, that you can complete. I'll be looking at how you find the assessment, where you look for it, and how you then go in and complete the assessment. I'm going to talk about the summative or the real test, so the one that you actually have to submit for, for the module. Um, and two things that I'll highlight is um, what, how you'll know that you've submitted. So that's often a question we get from students and also what to do if there's technical issues. So we do, some students do run into technical, is, technical issues whilst doing the module. So I'll go through that with you. Um, I'll also tell you how the task one is marked so that you have a good idea of um, the, how, how it's marked. So it's not just a uh, multiple choice question where one answer is, is correct. So I'll take you through that because that's a little bit different from other MCQs you would have done in the past. I'll tell you how to find the article um, that the MCQ is based on. I'm going to go through the process for students who have extra time allowances. So uh, those are students who've been who have a learning contract with Sheffield Hallam University and for any timed assessments there are, are allowed to have extra time to complete the assessment. So I'll just take you through that process. Um, I'll also take you through the process of requesting extensions just in case you need to, to do that for this assessment. I'll take you through where to find support and who to go to for support. And I'll finish with some general reminders and, and an encouragement to, to really get this assessment under your belt early and get it finished early. Okay. Okay, so what is assessment task one? Um, it's an online multiple choice test and it'll require you to engage with appraising an article. The article, it, the reference for the article is already on Blackboard and um, the task supports you to appraise relevant literature. So it supports you to develop that skill related to appraising literature. You have one hour to complete the test and that time starts when you, when you start the timer on the test. So it doesn't start when you start reading the article, um, just when you do the test. There are 10 questions that you have to answer. And as I've said, the reference is on Blackboard you can read it at your leisure, you can critique it at your leisure, um, make sure that you're very familiar with the article before you actually start the timed test. Okay, the time test can be taken at any time from now till the end of the module. So make sure you've done the, um, the learning that, that you need to do to prepare yourself um, and familiarize yourself with the article and then go in and do it when, when you are ready. So that gives you plenty of time before now and when the module assessment is actually due at the end of the module. Okay, this assessment task is weighted at 20% of your final module grade. So task two is 80% and this is 20%. OK, there is an assessment brief which is available on Blackboard and you might have seen it already. It's just above where this video is. So um, it's an assessment brief which takes you through all the aspects of the assessment and what the requirements are for the assessment, when the handing dates are um, and things like that. So do take a look at that assessment brief and familiarise yourself with that. OK, so how to prepare yourself for this task one. So in week two, you have developing skills for evidence based practice. And that's really the core um, lesson, the core chapter that you need to look at when preparing yourself for this assessment. So to go through the exercise, this, this self-directed exercise where you critique an article and, and practice those skills yourself. Then on Blackboard, 
there is a practice or a formative so that those words are kind of used interchangeably but if you look for the practice or formative assessments there's one there for you to practice so so you can go on to blackboard you can look for the article you can critique it and then you can go through and you can do the um the, the questions the multiple choice questions in that formative assessment that formative assessment, you can do as many times as you want. So we don't lock that down for you. You can, we do lock it down time-wise, just that you get that experience of how much time it'll take you to complete the assessment, but you can go back and practice it again if you want to practice it again. Obviously the, the summative or the real test that you have to do is a different article. So, um, that, so it's more the skill of appraising and answering the questions that you'll be practicing in the formative assessment. Okay, so the next few slides are just going to take you through how to find task one. So in the left hand column on Blackboard, you should see a section called assessments that I've highlighted there with a blue arrow. Okay, so once you've opened up that assessment section of Blackboard, you will see something similar to what I've got on the screen here. Um, we have the introduction to module assessment, which you've looked at, the assessment briefings, which this presentation is um, in that folder. We've got a note about assessment regulations, and that's just to tell you that for this module, you've got two tasks, and because the tasks are both assessing different things, you have to pass both tasks in order to pass the module. So although potentially your overall mark could be over 50 if one of the marks for, the, for one of the tasks is under 50 you will have to resubmit that task so you won't have to submit both but you would have to submit the one so that both your tasks get to over 50. okay but the information for today's presentation is in the folder highlighted there with the blue arrow which is the literature um, search and review folder okay and as i've said there um, this um, folder contains instructions on how to complete task one, a practice or a formative um, assessment for you to complete, and then the final submission point. It will also give you your deadline date for when you have to have submitted the assessment by. Okay, so once you've clicked on that um, folder, you will then see a number of different items within that folder the first one gives you just a little bit more information about the assessment task most of that i'm covering today anyway but have a look at that and read it just to make sure you are aware of the requirements for the assessment okay scrolling down a little bit lower you will see a this um information about what to do if there's a technical issue so i'll take you through that um, again in a little bit, but this is where you'll find the um, the forms and things that you need to complete for that. So we'll, yeah, we'll cover that later. And then scrolling down even further, you'll see two folders, one called the practice formative assessment folder and one which is the summit sub submission point or the real test. OK, so if you click on to that, you will find the reference to the article as well as the MCQ test. OK, so what you would do is click to open the folder to find those. OK, so this is a, an example of the formative assessment. It's got an article to show you the article. And then once you've read that article and critiqued it, you can come back and you can click on this link here. Okay. Okay, so when you click on that link, this page will open. So it gives you a little bit more information about the assessment, all the rest. When you click on the begin button at the bottom right hand side, that's when your timer will start. Okay, so don't click on that until you are ready to start the assessment. OK, so when you click begin, this page will open and the timer will start. You'll be able to see the timer at the top. You'll need to scroll down to find the questions. And as I said, there's 10 questions and each question has got four answers. So you'll have you can then select which answer you want to have saved. OK, when you finish, you will then click 
the Save button. Okay, and once you've done that, you should get this pop-up. Okay, so that's just you know, click Cancel if you want to go back to the test and check it, or otherwise click OK. So then you click OK, and you should then get a screen up that looks a bit like this. Now, this screen is the only time you'll see it is when it pops up. OK, once you've clicked OK away from the screen, you won't see it ever again. So that means that just for your own peace of mind, you might want to just take a screenshot at this stage so that you've captured it and saved it some way so that you have the evidence that it's been done because I know that does create some anxiety for students and we always get a few students going oh I don't know if I've submitted or not so so just take it it'll tell you that you have submitted it and that can be for your own peace of mind okay and the reason I'm saying that is because next time you go in and you click on the link and you open up the test you'll it'll look like you can complete the test again so but you can't if you click on that begin button I'll show you what pops up okay so you'll get a little pop-up saying you've already completed this on such and such a date and it'll send you back to the module so you won't be able to complete it again and that's also a way to check to make sure it has um, the blackboard has acknowledged or registered that you've um, completed the assessment okay now those assessment that assessment won't show in your my grades until we release the marks, okay? And that's usually three weeks um, after the submission deadline. So um, don't panic. It's just that we've hidden them because we can't release the answers to you until everybody's completed it. And we've had a bit of a moderation to make sure that there's nothing that's unfairly disadvantaged you in, in any kind of way. Okay, so if you have a technical issue, that does happen occasionally. It's not common, but it does happen. So the first thing I want you to do is take a deep breath because the one thing that we learn on this course is that when the fight flight response is triggered or when our limbic system and our amygdala are in charge, our frontal lobes just shut down. Okay, so take a deep breath, calm down, we can solve the issue. OK, then the next thing, if you can take a screenshot of the error message that's come up, because then that's quite good evidence to to demonstrate what the issue is. OK, and then submit that issue using the form. Now, the form links you can find in two places, one in Blackboard where I showed you earlier. OK, so there's a little link there that takes you to the form. The next one I have on the next slide. OK, and then the other place you can find it. So just in case Blackboard is completely failing you and you can't find it any, anywhere, then go to your module handbook. OK, remember, the link to the module handbook is at the top of the um, our learning content content on the SIE SAT module site. So just go to that right at the bottom. There's something called assessment support and results. And then there is a section on what to do if you have a technical issue. And it's got the little link to that. OK. OK, so this is just a little bit about how task one is marked. As I said earlier, it's not like your traditional one answer is right and the rest are, are a wrong type of multiple choice question. So 10 questions, four answers each, and each question is worth 10%. OK, so. If you select the completely true answer, you will get 10% for that question. If you select one that's approaching true, so there will be one in amongst those questions that is almost correct, okay, you'll get 8% for that. There will also be one there that's mainly wrong, some truth in it, okay, you'll get 4% if you select that one. And then there'll be one that's completely wrong and then you'll get no percent for that. OK, there's no negative marking, so it's worth having a go, even if you can't, not quite sure. OK, so don't disadvantage yourself. 
because you will likely choose one of the ones that are, are up towards true or approaching true. So, so have a go and yeah, don't panic. Okay, so when you're looking to find the articles, some of those articles that we have referenced are open source and some aren't open source. So we've tried to indicate to you which one that is, um, but it should be pretty obvious because if you click on the DOI link, which is in the reference, um, then it'll either take you to the full article, so then that'll be an open source article, or it will take you to just the abstract or a bit of information about the article. So those ones you will need to log in to the library to access the article. Um, the library's made it quite easy. In the library, you'll find a little search bar. If you click in there, um, that, that search bar over there, if you click in there, it will then, you can just type in either the journal article name or the journal name, and it will take you to uh, a page with the different options of different journals or, or um, your search, your searches, I suppose. And within that, underneath each of those, you'll have something that looks like this. OK, and then you just click on available online and it'll take you to all the options that um, are available to you as a student with Sheffield Hallam um, with that you can access the journal online. OK, some of those won't be full text, but usually the top ones are. So, so just go in and have a look for those. OK. OK, this is just the process for people who have extra time allowances as part of their learning contract. So when the learning contract happens and gets developed between you and Sheffield Hallam University, that um, process of getting that information fed through into the assessment isn't automatic. So it takes a little bit of time. So what usually happens is that information gets sent through to Colette, who's the collaborative course lead, and she then sends us the notification. We can then go in and look at the learning contract and see if you are um, allowed additional time, but also how much additional time you're allowed. OK, we'll then go into Blackboard and add that to both the formative which is that practice test and the summative submission points so that you know you have that um, extra time added. OK, once we've done that, we'll drop you an email to let you know it's been added. OK, so if you haven't heard from us, then please do check in before you start the test. Um, and you can do that through just drop in support at Century Integration Education, um, an email, and um, they'll pass it on to any one of us in the team who are around who can can just go in and check that for for you and and confirm whether that extra time has been added okay okay so if you need to request an extension if you can't hand um, the assessment in by the due date this is managed through Sheffield Hallam University okay so it's called a request to extend a submission deadline okay um, information and links on how to do this where to go are all on in the module handbook so so take a look there it'll give you the information you need but just to note here that you have to do that at least 24 hours before the submission dates. So you can't do it within that 24 hour period. So that means you do need to try and be organized and prepared so that you can get things in on time, at least before, you know, before that 24 hour period. There are other options which I'll just mention to you here. You might not need to use them, but just to make you aware, there's something called a repeat an assessment attempt, a request to repeat an assessment attempt. And that means that you would repeat the assessment or resubmit the assessment during the resubmission time. But if that re request has been granted, that second attempt will actually be accounted as your first attempt. So it might be for students who um, can't submit on the first attempt for um, personal reasons, or it might be for personal reasons you feel that you've been very disadvantaged in that first attempt. So you would like your second attempt to be counted as your first attempt. 
Okay, so that all goes to Sheffield Hallam University. They usually suggest you speak to a support advisor so that they can go through the process with you more carefully. There is another option that I need to just raise with you and that's breaking studies. Now, breaking studies means you're not gonna complete this module now, you're gonna come back um, in a different semester or a different academic year to come back and redo the assessment redo the module and, and do the assessment. Now you can't take a break in studies four weeks before an assessment is due. Okay, so if you're thinking about break in studies, that you need to manage that a little bit earlier in the module. Okay. Okay, so now where to find support for the module assessment. So there are frequently asked questions for the assessment. So take a look, they might answer the questions that you have. Um, those are available both on Blackboard and on the SIE module site. So you, know, you can look at either place for the, for the answers there. There's also a, an assessment Q&A site where you can go in and answer. So that's on your module site. You can go in, go in and ask questions and either your e-mentors or, your, um, or I will come in and answer those questions for you. There are also live assessment droppings, which are timetabled in your timetable under the key dates. So you can pop into one of those. Um, some students just pop in and have a listen. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a question. Um, if you have a question, it's quite useful if you let me know that question beforehand. And the way you do that is you fill out a little questionnaire, which is in the links to live sessions chapter on the SIE site. So just pop it, pop your question in there. I'll be able to pick it up and make sure I, I get to answer it during the session. OK, if you can't attend those sessions, we pull those questions into the frequently asked questions document. OK, so the the answers will be um, in there and you'll be able to um, see what what other people are asking. Okay, if none of those places are working for you to get support, then do drop us an email. But use the support at sensory integration um, email that um, they can then direct your query to the right person. Of course, your e mentor is also quite willing to give you support, and your e mentor can also direct you to the right person. So if you have if you prefer to use them or if you have already have a relationship with them, then that's fine if you contact them too. OK, so just some final reminders before we finish up. Aim to complete the assessment task early. As I've said, this assessment task assesses different knowledge to what assessment task two does. So get this one out of the way and then you can focus on um, the rest of the module and assessment task two. Um, try out using the formative. That'll just help prepare you for what to expect. Familiarize yourself with Blackboard now. As we know, assessment time brings up our anxieties. So if you familiarize yourself now while you're a bit calmer, you can know where to find things and, and how to navigate your, your way around Blackboard. Um, make sure you can access your SHU emails. Any correspondence will go there. Um, for example, those of you who are getting the um, extra time, we will e that email will come to you to your SHU email. OK. Spend time preparing yourself, your space, and your tech before you actually go in and do the module. So just things like making sure that the people around you, your family or your friends, know that you're about to sit down and do this assessment and you need an hour's worth of quiet time and not to be interrupted. Make sure that your charge and your, bat your battery charge is full or that your um, laptop is actually plugged in so that your computer doesn't fail you halfway through. Make sure that they know updates that are waiting to happen so that your computer doesn't suddenly turn off halfway through doing the assessment. OK, so just be make sure you're prepared in, in terms of your, your space so you can sit down and do it without interruption. OK, we know where to direct queries, use the Q&A forum, use your e-mentor, use support um, at Sensory Integration.
And that's it. So thank you very much for your time and taking the time to um, watch this presentation and all the best with this assessment task. Thank you.